Hello and welcome to the Mindset Michelle TV show. We're so super, super excited to be having you join us again today for yet more fascinating insights and suggestions from experts about how you too can create a mindset for success. And today we've got the extra special guest because her name's Michelle as well. So it's Michelle Cavello. Hello, Michelle. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? It's so lovely to be speaking to another Michelle because it's such a special name, isn't it? It'd be it'd either be really easy or really confusing. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, was that Michelle or Michelle? <laughs> So Michelle Cavello, for those that aren't aware, is this fabulous and amazing, lovely lady who is a founder of Lantern Partners, which is a CEO, CFO advisory services business. Now, some of you may know what a virtual CFO and a CFO and some of those terms are that I've just used. But before we go into Lantern Partners and all of that, Michelle, do you want to share with people a little bit more about how you came to be in finance and how you came to set up Lantern Partners. Sure, no problem at all. And thanks for the lovely introduction. Um, so my background, um, as you can just about tell for, from my accent sometimes, Ed, so I grew up in the UK. Um, I've been in Australia, and that's where I started my career uh, in finance. Um, but I've been in Australia now for uh, almost 20 years. I think it's 20 years next year, um, which is a bit of a milestone. Um, I started my finance career at PwC um, and I started it in the media and entertainment division um, in audit. Um, loved the firm, loved the clients, the people I met, um, didn't love doing audit. Um, so I moved out pretty quickly to an area of finance called sort of broadly commercial finance, um, still for mainly media, um, media marketing technology type companies. Uh, and um, initially in, in London, in the UK, um, and then kind of transitioned over here. And commercial finance, for those of you that don't know, it's... Um, it's the more business facing part of finance, kind of what we call the business partnering and the forward looking kind of planning, uh, strategizing, working out kind of scenarios, that kind of thing, uh, which I really loved. Uh, and then, yes, just over 10 years ago, uh, I stepped out of corporate um, life and into consulting and now oh. Lantern Partners. So um, yeah, we we describe ourselves as um, a virtual CFO firm because it's the easiest thing to understand. Um, but we're real. Um, there's uh, there's ten of us now, and we um, we work with clients uh, internationally and nationally. Um, and um, and yeah, we work with mainly with founder CEOs um, and work within the startup and scale up space uh, across a number of different industries. Oh, fabulous. And what a wonderful explanation. And, and um, thank you for explaining also around the accent, because um, I'm sure people would have been wondering, um, where did that lovely accent come from? Um, also, for those that don't quite understand the world of finance, CFO is Chief Financial Officer. So I know sometimes um, there's a little bit of an assumption that everybody understands what CFO is, but um, it's very much a commercial or a corporate type of um, language. Yeah. So Michelle, with that interesting background with PwC or Price Waterhouse Coopers and, and that, you know, training ground in order. So you obviously have a very deep dive and understanding about finance and how financial systems and departments work. But that that's very much like um, you know, numbers and, and forensic sort of accounting and, and understanding how, you know, the flow of income, the flow of this, the flow of that. What then, given that unique and in-depth understanding of how money works and how it impacts on businesses and their success, what then do you think success means to you? So I think that, and actually in terms of, you know, that that in-depth view of, of finance and that technical speciality. What I actually really loved about my job back in commercial finance and also now with Lantern Partners is it's not so much starting with the numbers, it's having 
the numbers tell the story of the business and very much kind of approaching it from that way. So, so for me, those numbers are kind of painting a picture um, and that's that's how we work with businesses. So I, I, it actually works the other way around for, for us um, and how we, we engage. But success for me, and I think this, this became... This became really clear to me when I had to, had to, well, I've, I, it, do, it did feel at the time like I had to kind of step out of corporate life. Um, success means being able to design my own life and my way of working and who I work with. And of course, you can do that within corporate. But um, for me, the greatest freedom and flexibility in terms of how I designed my career going forward was to start something for myself Uh, and that for me um, and that's what I always try and come back to when I think about what is successful for me within the business for the people that work within the business and for the for the business we we work with Um, and everybody's definition of of success as obviously you know from, from talking to so many people right is really different um, and I think um, be, being able to really understand kind of where that comes from yourself um, and really being able to have that the root of how you live your life, kind of both work and personal and that blend, um, that's, that's if, you can, if you can nail that, that that's success for me. Oh, what a wonderful, I loved how you framed that, that, that it was that blend of work and life and and all of those many different areas it was the blend of that because it is a balance and and that is um, especially for business owners um, something that can be a bit harder to do because work doesn't kind of stop when you leave the office work kind of continues (laughs) yeah (laughs) continues on And I also, I just wanted to reflect back a little bit about how beautifully you described um, that it wasn't the technical expertise that you necessarily remember from those early years. It's actually how it trained you to look at things as the story. What was it behind the numbers, that the story there? And that's the sense I get with your, your definition of success as well. It's not outwardly perhaps what it looks like in terms of the job or the family, but it's that story around the blend. Such a beautiful way of of framing it and describing it. I know that viewers then would be really interested to see or hear more then around your fabulous insights around how they too can create that blend or look at things like um, dry statistics in terms of the story. So what sort of suggestions may you have for them? Um, I think... I think first it really um, it it's really important to kind of sit with that why and what's important to you as opposed to the, what success looks like to everyone else. I think people can quite often get caught up with you know how things look like from the outside, um, and I know there's a lot of chat about you know it's, it's all it's 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 also damaging for for kids these days with social media and. Yes, it has amplified, I think, the amount of people whose kind of outsides you can see. But I think it's always been there. I think there's a there's a human need to, if not kind of compare yourself to other people, kind of it's all it's your benchmark. We're social creatures, right? You kind of benchmark yourself or, or compare yourself, um, or certainly there's a drive to against what other people are kind of doing. And I think that it can get really distracting. And I think that if you're trying to live your life um, aspiring to a view of success or what success looks like defined by what you see in other people, it can be quite a dangerous game because it it doesn't come from somewhere that's really kind of centered for you. So I think kind of sitting with that why is really, really important. I, I agree so much. Um, you know, Simon Sinek is the most famous person for talking about start with why. And and I love there how you've expanded on that start with why with very much also recognising that um, 
it's it's that whole thing of keeping up with the Joneses, you know. Before social media, it was very much, you know, what, what are your neighbours doing and do they have a new car? So we need a new car. Do they have a dog? So we need a dog. So that judging and comparing was around long, long before social media. And yep. I love how um, you, your insights into that are very much sharing around how, well, it, it's important to keep focused on your centre and what's important to you and not to keep being swayed by these judgments they're going to come up but mm. not keep being swayed by comparing yourself to others such yeah. a fabulous um insight so thank you michelle <laughs> no problem um, and I, I think the other thing that's really important in, as well in terms of um you know creating that mindset around success is around the support networks you you um, build around yourself and I type, talk to a lot of people starting their own business, whether that's the founders that we work with or consultants that, or people within corporate that are making the move to consultancy that I'm working with. Um, and what I, what, what I often observe is that those support networks around those new businesses and new founders are really, really important. And I think sometimes when people are starting their own business, they don't um, take into account um, um, how important those different support networks are um, and where you get your advice from and who whose company you seek out. Um, because we've got our personal support networks. But I think w- whatever you do for work, whether you do something independently or whether you, um, you're working with in a corporate role or, you know, surrounding yourself or, you know, becoming a new parent, for example, you, if you, you need to surround yourself with people that are going through the same thing as you or have gone through the same thing as you, because that will give you a different kind of support network than, and which is as important as the personal networks that you, um, you build up and I don't mean that in terms of like networking groups um you know they obviously have their place and they can be really helpful I mean kind of the the organic kind of people that that you seek out in your life and that's always been really important for me from a mindset perspective um and again particularly when I was starting my own business having having that support you know, having the views and the support of the people that have been through it before was really important. I mean, I didn't know that many people that had done consulting. So I, I literally went out to everyone I know and said, do you know anyone that's done this before? <laughs> Introduce me. I'll buy them coffee. I just want to, I just want to talk to them. <laughs> um, and so I talked to all these amazing people who from a number of, not just finance, from a number of different disciplines, you know, HR, legal, kind of, you know, marketing, all these different um uh, disciplines to find out kind of what their experience was and you know to get their learnings and to kind of get their support and that was really really helpful for me. I, I think that this is one of the key things especially for people whether they're starting a new business, starting a new career or looking to change careers um, you, you hit on a very very important aspect of it which is surrounding yourself with people that are either on the same journey or have been on that journey before and can give you sort of some insights about the journey itself. Surrounding yourself, but even re- that, that first step of recognising that you need to surround yourself with a new group of people and it can feel a bit scary looking for new people and having coffees with complete strangers. But it's <laughs> another form of learning, isn't it? It's a way of learning about what you don't know because you just don't know and and perhaps even your well-intentioned friends, family, or all of those well-intentioned people that you currently have around you, they may have lots of fabulous advice, but they've never done it and they've never had those experiences that you really want to be talking to the people that have had the experiences and have been there and, and, and in a sense as well also gone through your journey of setting up that support network so they can... Um, I'm sure you you came across this as well when you started that sometimes I would go to places and I'd I'd encounter very, very successful people, but I'd be going, well, their values don't align. So as much as I may admire how successful they are and how they do what they do, they're alpha, they're very alpha, male, female, whatever, 
the kind of um, strong, G Gary V is a good example for me, you know, because yeah. it's very much in your face. Yeah. And I can admire all the success, but I can also recognise that that isn't my personality. And yeah. if yeah. it's not your personality, then surrounding yourself with those, those types of people actually can be a little bit detrimental because you keep trying to be somebody that you're not. Did, yeah. did you have a similar journey? Yeah, so um, I, yeah, I, I think it, I think it is really important to um, to work out who to ask the advice from. Um, I, I was given, uh, I was given this advice by um, uh, a founder that we work with. Actually, it's a quote he uses all the time that I love, um, which is, "Don't ask the advice of someone who hasn't been where you want to go." And that can be, you know, your business end goal or, you know, the values that this person kind of is aspiring towards. It, it's because not all advice is created equal, right? I mean, I did ask a whole bunch of people for their learnings and advice, but I didn't take every single piece of advice on board. I, I, I don't think I would have even been able to get started because people come at it from different, different life experiences. And, um, if you're asking someone for advice that hasn't had, you know, doesn't have the same objective or doesn't have the same life experience um, or reasons for doing it, then that, that advice isn't going to be as helpful to you as someone who has a more similar, whether it's value system or, or objective um, as you do. And, it, and it's not about just seeking out people that are going to agree with you. It's, it's far from that um, because, but, but the, the advice that you may not initially like or may not may initially contradict what you're thinking if it's coming from someone who's done what you're trying to do or has the same value system or um, you know ha has something that makes sense in terms of why you should take their advice to heart it's really important to take that on board um, but, you know, Auntie Margaret, who's only ever, you know, had one job in her life and, you know, she's going to come from a perspective of being genuinely worried about you kind of um, going and doing, a, you know, a consulting job or doing, you know, changing careers every two, every two years or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, you know, you've got to find that that right person to get advice from, I think. That, that's so true. I, I, I think I came across this more than ever when I was um, doing the cover for my book, for one of my books a couple of years ago. And um, I, I really got at that point that people's opinions, like your Auntie Margaret, was a very, di very different. No disrespect to any Auntie Margaret's out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we love Auntie Margaret. We love Auntie Margaret. And, and you know, you get that love and that caring that comes and you recognise that with that advice. But it was very different to an expert opinion. Mm. So, you know, something about the colours, the layout, the this, the that. And so for me at the time, it was it was actually quite a good learning. Again, this is all learning experiences. It was a good way of learning about, well, I'm looking for support on this and I'm getting feedback on it. But like you were saying so beautifully, you know, you, you can hear it all, but which parts of it you actually take on board or you choose to look at is yeah. very different again. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um um, and I, th I think the final one for me in terms of, well, well not final, the, the most important one for me that I've, I probably had to, I, I've learned latest is around energy management and how that impacts on your success, um, your, your mindset for success, your physical ability to, to be successful. Um, I've, you know, I've, I think I was probably kind of properly burnt out when I left my corporate career. Um, I There were certain things I didn't fix in the way that I approached kind of work and life that meant I got really burnt out um, again a couple of years ago. And that's when it really kind of sunk in that I probably needed to do something different about how I managed my energy and that kind of transfer of energy, whether it was kind of on the home front or on the work front or on the social front, and, you know, <laughs> recognising I couldn't do all of all the things 
um, at 150% um, because there was going to be, be an impact. And I think I've really had to learn that over the last few years um, as well. And, you know, I think I would, you know, if someone had talked to me about energy management 10 years ago, I would have kind of just gone, you know, <laughs> so it's all a little bit woo woo for me. Um, but, um, but I actually realize now, um, or have come to realize over the last couple of years, that it's actually a really, really critical, important strategy for being able to achieve success. You have to be able to manage your energy because you just can't achieve the things that you want to if you're coming from a place of, of being really depleted energy wise. And, and actually, the funny thing was, was when I started doing less in some aspects, the business actually grew <laughs> and it became, you know, arguably more successful um, because I was able to be much more um, intentional about the things that I put my energy into. And I think kind of choosing, choosing where you put your focus and where you put your energy and being really mindful of that um, is incredibly important. What a wonderful, wonderful um, journey and recognition I, I can hear you sharing there about um, energy management. You're so right. Um, if, if we were talking about energy management, even before COVID, people would have just thought it was all woo-woo stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> over these last few years, it's become fascinating how um, mental wellness, energy management, all these things are now topics that people do talk about um, to do with their mental health, to do with managing their success and their mindset. I think that we, we've reached a point where um, talking about energy management and recognising that you can't always be 150% on as a mum, as a business owner, as a this, as a that, mm. fill in the blank as a role. Yeah. <laughs> and the other wonderful thing that is really starting to come out is, I, I believe, people's recognition around energy management starts with me. Mm. So like you were sharing, you know, you, you kind of burnt out a few times and, and is that really, and, and this is where it comes back to that lovely word you used before about the blend, mm. you know, the blend of work and the blend of life. Um, the third element that's in there is the blend of you time. Mm. So very much you're many, many people were either a business owner or a parent or a this or a that. There are many of those outward activities. And now um, with the energy management and things like that, people are recognising, well, actually, um, if I'm not working okay and if I'm not managing my energy, then mm. these outside things are not working as well either. And I love, because it's so true, I love how you shared that as soon as you started to recognise and work on your own energy management, the business became more successful because that's that's what everybody always shares about, um, oh, I didn't, you know, work myself to the bone this week and our sales went up 100%. <laughs> I wish it always worked like that. But, um, but, but, um, but yeah, there, there is definitely something to be said for it. And I think, like, um, I, I think as well it's about taking personal responsibility for your choices as well um you know it's it's the life that you want to create and success you want to create you're personally responsible for that I think that um quite often often right I, I do I I see it um time and time again where it's almost like uh, people expect someone else to come and fix it for them if they're in a job they don't like um, for example, or, or things aren't going in the right direction in the business, you, it's up to you, whatever, whatever it is, whether you're working for yourself, you're working for someone else, it's your responsibility to fix that. Um, and there's that uh, quote, prayer, I'm not a particularly religious person, but it's the, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And all of those points, all of those aspects are so, so important. But it but it really is, for me, you know, taking that personal responsibility of working out what you accept, what you can change, and, you know, how to figure out which one of those things it is. And, and I love how you've linked that with that energy management because that personal responsibility 
in, in many aspects actually starts with your energy management because mm. having the energy to recognise what you can change, what you can't, and what you need to just accept as being what it is yeah. starts with, um, in that way, having the energy to recognise what's going on and recognise your responsibility. And, and I love that word that you're using there as well because it, it is that responsibility of, uh, the business isn't going well or I'm not happy with my job. What is my responsibility and what can I do? Like like you're saying, what can I do? What can't I do? And what do I need to just accept is going to never change in this situation or, yeah. or not change in my time with this situation? Yeah. These, um, the interplay and the interaction to all, from all of that is very important, I believe, for people's own self-awareness and and many of the terms that we're talking about with energy management and personal responsibility, there are other ways of describing that self-awareness about what is it that's important to me, what am I responsible for doing if I don't like what's going on or if I like what's going on, how do I, that's the other side of it, how do I keep doing more, which yeah. again comes to the personal responsibility of, you know, surrounding yourself with more people in that space or doing more activities in that space. How, how do you see that these fabulous tips that you've shared around um, not comparing yourself to others, building the support networks and, and doing the energy management, how do you see then that these areas and these successful habits or, or approaches to things, how do you see for yourself then that, or, or feel that this has really helped you with you creating a successful mindset? Um, I think that, um, yeah, and I love how you talk about self-awareness and I love the ha how that that's becoming so much more of a conversation these days. Um, I th because I think that touches every single one of those success strategies or um you know the the building blocks for for being successful you know the starting with your why and you know taking personal responsibility recognizing what you need in terms of support networks all of i i, I couldn't even pick one of those things that has been the most important to me in terms of um you know building a successful business and again I, I kind of have to go back to the point of you know it, it may look a certain way on the outside but there's still you know obviously daily struggles with kind of the business and what's next and how do I grow it and what do I do so for me all of those questions that kind of regularly come up come back to okay go back to your toolkit and you know, having that reflection point and making sure you kind of sit with it. And I, I think the reason why I ended up in, in burnout a couple of times is because I didn't go and sit with where I was at the time or where the business was. I kept chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing uh, without a real um, a point of reflection where I went, okay, why, why am I doing this again? Um, why did I start this business? Um, who can I speak to out of my support network? All of those kind of things within my toolkit. Um, or, you know, it's like you kind of come up with a with a problem. You're like, right, okay, <laughs> hang on a minute there. I mean, go back, sit down, rummage through your toolkit, work out kind of how, how you solve that problem from, from the, the, the toolkit you have or kind of something that you might need to add into it. Um, so so that's, that's what's really kind of helped me um, kind of build where I am now. And, you know, there, there's so much more that I want to do um, and so much more that I want to kind of grow and discover and um, build in terms of the business, but also me personally. Um, so, yeah. Fabulous. And, and I really love how you've, you've brought it all so beautifully together and, and reflected on your success very much has been from that that ability to, to go into the toolkit and bring out different things that you need at different times. So if people are looking for a virtual real CFO, <laughs> what's the best way for them to get hold of you? 
<laughs> um, well, you can get hold of me um, on LinkedIn. Um, the beauty of having an unusually uh, unusual surname is that um, you, you know you're only going to find one Michelle Cavello when you when you go searching on LinkedIn. Um, we you can also go to our website um, www.lanternpartners.com.au. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram um, for a bit more lighthearted sharing at Michelle Cavello again. Fabulous. And if you were to give some advice to your young, younger self, what, what sort of advice would that be? Um, I think trying to develop that self-awareness earlier. Certainly didn't have it in my 20s. Um, and uh, I think take more risks I think everybody says that to their younger self I think well you know just just try new stuff to always be trying new stuff um and uh, get a mentor earlier um I I invested in one kind of really for the first time properly um uh, about 18 months ago and it has made such a difference to kind of the business and and also how I operate the business and in the business. So um, I'd say probably those those three things. Fabulous. It's been such an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much, Michelle. Oh, likewise. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. And to all of the viewers, I hope that, again, you've heard some amazing, incredible tips today about creating and building those that mindset for success from someone that, again, has built successful life and had a blend, I love that word, had a blend of that success throughout many different areas of her world. But for now, from my heart to your heart, be great, be fabulous and be you.